in the uh, comments, so people were talking about Eric Bieniemy. Um, I don't know if you saw the other uh, reports that he's interviewing around the league to be an OC. Uh, I believe the Commanders were one of the teams, the Ravens were one of the teams, and a few other teams were were uh, there. Um, what do you make of that? Why why would he make a lateral move to go to another team to be an offensive coordinator elsewhere? JD? I, th- to me, that doesn't make any sense. But uh, maybe you could provide a little bit of clarity to tell why why he would do that. Well, I I, I think part of it is to get from underneath any shadow possibly right it's like he just still didn't get his due it's the same thing like hey if everything goes wrong it's cb calling the call making the calls if everything's all right it's andy making the calls and then when you know we shared the video and i think you shared it with you know travis yes is well you know andy making the calls and i'll say man it's a co- collaborative effort no doubt about it you know we only know truly truly who's doing what you know at certain times they only truly know who's making call who's writing everything up but it is a collaborative effort no doubt about it Andy's the one that said EB makes the calls and that not, you know, so Andy's lying. So that's the thing about, it. I think EB is just like, look, I got to go somewhere. So there's no question, you know, as far as my brilliance and I can do these things to move up. I think it's really a, a disservice and injustice that he hadn't had a head coach job yet. I mean, really, especially the, the type of guys that's gotten jobs as head coaches in the NFL now and EB hadn't gotten a shot. Yeah. That, that that's, to me, it's just as tragic. It really is. So I know, you know, you have one guy saying one thing, like Shady McCoy said, whatever, but EB, he, he deserves a shot. He really does. So, oh. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's one of those things I, I, I read. I mean, you talk about like guys who've got the, you know, and who've got even interviews, right? Ken Dorsey, OC for the Bills this one year, and, and you can say this offense has regressed big time in, in a year. And Ken Dorsey was the, the OC, got, got, is the OC for the Bills. He gets interviewed for a head coaching job at Carolina. Mm -hmm. I don't think Carolina even interviewed uh, EB for their head coaching position. Um, They've already filled it. um, But, I mean, the fact they're interviewing guys like Ken Dorsey. And also another aspect, too, is I love Matt Nagy. I'm glad he's back with us as a QB coach. But Matt Nagy got that job being being the Bears head coach and being in the same position that the enemy was in. Yeah. The enemy's been more successful in that OC role than Nagy was. I mean, this this run, this five year run, this is all this as EB being the OC. You know, we could talk about who's who's being the 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 play caller or not, but EB's been in this role for the last five years, and you can arguably say has the best body of work of any OC in the league. Oh, yeah. um, no doubt. Right now. Like, that, that doesn't make any sense to me why he would be passed over. Well, I mean, I, I think it's still that that's the bias sometimes that, that you know that people may have that they don't realize it, right? And this is assuming that Nagy was a guy, you know, this is, you know, he's, he's a brilliant guy. He can come in, he can run the team, but somewhere, somehow they feel that EB can. So, you know, that, that's what I'm saying. Like there, there needs to be some type of things to be, be addressed. You know, they're able to get around the Rooney rule and the stuff like that, which is just, is crazy because the thing, the reality is nobody wants the Rooney rule to exist. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> nobody wants it to. If everything was fair and it was all married and all these different things, then you wouldn't have to create anything like that, right? That's 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 the whole that's the whole point of it. And so it's like, man, if everybody's getting a fair shake at these things, right? And, and you, like you said, based off the body of work, then the natural process should be EB should be a head coach somewhere in the league, right? So that's 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 my point i'm making i think a lot of people make the point like benjamin the same thing everybody's making those type of points man and everybody's they didn't see it and what if 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 it's maybe uh an owner or somebody who may not necessarily be uh uh, comfortable or feel like they want to give reins over to a guy i don't know so like i said you know we, we can't necessarily know what's in a person's heart but we do see the things that happen uh that you have to question and wonder what is it then Right. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, Colts haven't Colts have interviewed him twice and they haven't named their head coach yet. So there's a chance that he could get his head coaching gig with uh, Indianapolis. I don't know if you necessarily want that, that head coaching job. Cause that for, for me personally, that's kind of a mess over there outside of Jonathan Taylor. And they have some good pieces here and there. No, I don't I, know if that's, a, that's not the head coaching job I would want. Actually, but, you know what? I, I, I really believe, man, the Colts would be a great, great job for EB, to be honest with you. If he get if he gets a, a wide uh, you know if he gets a good quarterback, which I think they will, uh, I think man they they're very good they're a very good football team very good football team. I, I spoke to one of the rookies on the team and I told him who I thought who was going to come to their their team as a quarterback. Uh, 
So who? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I would just, I would just, he was like, man, he said, I would love to have that guy. I said, man, I'm telling you, uh, the way I see it, how things are shaking up, this is a possibility. I said, if you get EB out there, man, he's a player's coach. He'll get guys rallying around him to get to play. He is, he's a former player and guys, they, they absolutely, they love guys like that because they know that he's been there before. He can relate mm. to these guys. So why would you not want a guy like this as your head coach? No, I know EB. I mean, EB, when I'm telling you as a motivator, when he gets in the locker room with the guys, man, he's going to get it out of them. Believe me, he is going to get it out of them. Trust me. So that's the thing about him. Man. Excuse me. You know, if you can take a chance on Jeff Saturday, right? And I, I'll be like, shoot, Jeff Saturday, I'll try to get him on my staff. Hey, Jeff, you want to coach? Hey, how about this? Why don't you do this for me, right? You know, and, and I think those things can work, especially if you have former players working together. They understand what these things mean. That would be a great fit for, for EB. I, th- I think he'd, he'd do a good job, man, with Indianapolis. No doubt about it. Seriously. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it would be a huge loss for us. I know there's a lot of fans that want him to go. And obviously, yeah, I, I want him to get a head coaching job. Uh, but the selfish aspect, I don't want EB to leave because I feel like there are things would change. And I know a lot of people think it's Andy Reid's offense and it's Pat and Andy and nothing else matters. But, like, that is a change. And we've had – we've been lucky enough where we've had this the continuity of having all these guys for the last uh, five years together. Um, so it'd be, it would be kind of sad to see EB go, but also – I'd be happy for him, you know, Absolutely. personally. Listen, at, at a certain point, man, guys got to move on. They got to move forward. And the thing is, he's he's done enough enough that he's 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 warranted getting a head coaching job somewhere in the, in the NFL. So my thing is, you know, keep being a coordinator here. You keep being successful. You're not making any type of advancement on on your career. I'm doing anything. You're always in the shadows of Andy. So you're not always going to get the dude that 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 is that is needed to you so that's why i'm saying man eb this might be a good move after this year after they win the super bowl to go and say hey look man it's it's time for me to, to have a shot really so uh they did somebody the nfl needs to make that happen yeah. truly and there might be something to the fact that the colts haven't hired a guy yet and they're they're waiting everybody most everyone else is, is closing up their doors on, the, on their guy and and that they say Jeff Saturday's still in the running for it. Uh, EB's still in the running for the Colts job. So hopefully uh, EB is the one who uh, comes out on top of that whole thing. Um, uh, I hope they, I hope they, if they, it happens, they work together, right? I think Jeff yeah. needs to learn a little bit more of like the coaching aspect of it, which will help him out tremendously. Um, it, 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 quite frankly, you, you see what Detroit's doing with the, with the all that that staff, all former NFL players on that team. Oh, I mean, man. Detroit looked amazing this year. Listen, I'm, I'm telling you, that, look, our staff that we had out there for the NFL PA Bowl, we were sitting there under the ride and said, man, we could take his bow and win this, the, the, the the championship, the Super Bowl. I said, man, you are <laughs> right. I'm telling you, man. We I'm all man, I'm te- Hall of Famers, you know, pro bowlers. We worked together and it was like the locker room, man. But we got our work done. We knew exactly how to, to do it. I watched these guys work, man. These dudes, man, were incredible. Every single one of them, all the guys, every single one of them, man. Um, yeah. and so when you have those things, you have the resources and, and people in your corner, but you know, guys that know how to do it. They know how to win. You got champ, you know, you got winners, you got winners. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that takes a little bit of that magic. That's that rapport that you need, um, you know, to make a difference. And so, you know, Andre said that, man, Dre said, I was like, man, you are right. I'm right there with you, brother. I'm right there with you. So. <laughs> That's yeah, funny. My, my brother and I were watching that game together. We we said the same thing. Like that, that'd be an amazing. Like if you had that staff, you if you name those guys who are on that staff as your team's coaching staff, like damn, that's a really good coaching staff. And that's the thing. It's like that's why. I mean, you can't pay for that kind of the years experience that you guys have. You know, like there's a lot of these coaching staffs who, you know, some of these guys play what two years in the league, one year in the league, and some of these guys they were played in the league. They were just the the, the, the son of. Uh, some somebody's uh, somebody who's a head coach of some other team or the owner of some team is the nepotism aspect of it. We're right. like, you guys actually have the, the body of work behind it. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can see some guys probably hadn't strapped up and got into the league, got into the trenches and understand what that means, mm-hmm. understand what that hurt is, understand to being injured and being hurt, all those different things, the mindset, the mentality, what it takes to win. Not, not, it's not really a strike against them. I'm just saying the guys that have been there before, they understand what it is and what it's all yeah. about. So I, when you want to try to at least adopt that type of same attitude, when you know somebody has been there, have done it at a high level, shoot, 
man, show me the way. And it was, mm-hmm. I'm telling you, we had it all, man. Cliff Matthews, Joe B, Richard McNutt, uh, Gunnar Daniels, Cameron Clark, Chad Lucas, those other guys I, I didn't even name on there. Shoot, yeah. uh, you know, Nick Novak, special team coach. I mean, come on, man. Chris Rowland. I mean, we we had we had guys, we had guys, yeah. and so um, that's the thing about it, man. We that uh, you could put a team like that together, and I love how they work up there in Detroit uh, with Campbell and those guys because you can see they understand what it's all about, right? They 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 didn't they didn't give up on each other. They didn't they you know they 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 bought in, and that's what you need to do when you come in. You buy into the system. You buy into a guy that you know who has played ball before. It's like your old teammate. You all got the same thing together. And sometimes, you know, guys who haven't necessarily been there, they, they don't quite know what that's all about. I mean, it's the same thing like it might in the military. You know, guys, that's, you know, it's been in the military. They understand that camaraderie and, and having each other's backs and particular things. And somebody who mm-hmm. hasn't been in the military, they don't quite understand those relationships, right? Nope. And so when you, you look at it, man, you just got to look in all of these things and understand like, yeah, that's a special, different bond that they had, you know? And so that, they, and you just got to see it, got to know it. So, yeah, and if you, and if like, that's the thing too, it's, it's like if you can name like the for Detroit, for example, you have Dan Campbell, head coach. He was a solid tight end in the league, played for a long time. Mm-hmm. Mark Brunel, quarterbacks coach. Um, Deuce Staley, running backs coach. Aaron Glenn, defensive coordinator. And these are all guys who, if you said you had a team, like, for, let's go back to the late nineties. If you said you had all these guys as your starting stars for those positions, yeah. you'd be like, damn, that's a, that's a playoff team right there. Like, yeah, no shit, right. it is. Right. <laughs> I mean, sure. Look at, I mean, I mean, Jaguars. Hey, you have uh, Greasy and all, like Doug Peterson. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. Like you, you start seeing teams, you know, have former players are doing well, right? So yeah. Um. Well, we have a question here from uh, Angry Junk in German. Of the former players, uh, JD knows who he like to see coach. Who would be really good? Hmm. Ooh. That's a good question. That's a, that's a really good question. Uh, man, there's, there's a ton of them. Uh, you know, if you, if you had narrowed down to one guy that they had coach with you, that you, that, that, that you would know who would probably be the – I'm sure you know a lot of guys who for that spot, but if you had to narrow it down to one guy as a, as a solid head coach, who, who would it be? Oh, man. Narrow down I'm sure it's tough. It's <laughs> very tough. It's very you tough. You got top five. Give me a top five then. Oh. Uh, mm, I think Mike, Mike Howell, Brian Greasy, uh, E.B., um uh of course uh uh, uh Lynn who's out there who was was with the the Chargers coach I think he he still need deserves a shot. Uh-huh. Uh let me see. Damn, you said top 5. Jeez. Uh, you know would be a good coach. I don't think he would, he would ever do it, but I think he'd be a great a hell of a coach. It's Drew Brees. I think Drew Brees would be a tremendous coach. Yeah. Um let me see who else. How many is that? Is that four or five? I think that's it's five, isn't it? Somewhere that's right. Yeah, it's five. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's tons of guys. Tons of guys. I mean, Demarco is. He's already going out there. Uh, shoot, I think uh, what's the name of two uh, that was uh, 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 the OC for uh, Brian Leftwich. He'd be a great. He'd be a great head coach too. I think. He'd yeah. Be shot. Yeah. Uh, Will Shields was a name on here. You think Will Shields could be could be a good coach? I don't think Will will do it. <laughs> will be a hell of a coach, man. But Will, he's uh I don't think it's his demeanor. You know, his demeanor to be a head coach. Will, I think, is uh an incredible person. Uh, but Will won't want to put up with all that silliness and mess, man. Will ain't about that silliness, you know. <laughs> don't got time for it. No, nah, I ain't got time for it, man. He's, you know, <laughs> he got time for it, man. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.